Hi, my name is Luann Meyer. And I'm Monroe County's Solid Waste Administrator. Today I'm going to present about Monroe County's Recycle Right program and how we incorporate sustainability every day into our program. Here's our agenda today. I will go through our entire system, give you some history about recycling in Monroe County, as well as some of the waste reduction tools we have, hot topics, and then if I do have time, I will discuss some myth busters. We can do a quiz. Monroe County is set up under an environmental infrastructure system, a uh, solid waste management system, where we have multiple facilities that are interconnected and we, uh, each of them somewhat relies on the other uh, for um, materials to be processed or managed. So we have a recycling center where we manage over 50,000 tons of residential and commercial recyclables annually. This facility is operated by waste management under operation and maintenance agreement. We have the resource recovery facility or transfer station. This is where solid waste uh, is delivered and then put into larger long haul vehicles or transfer trailers and brought to our mill seat landfill. So approximately 260,000 tons of municipal solid waste is managed every year. Cascades Recovery Plus operates this facility on behalf of Monroe County under a 10 year agreement. We also have an eco park, which is a unique facility in that it is a residential drop off where household hazardous waste, as well as pharmaceuticals, other hard to recycle items, such as electronics, rechargeable batteries, and those types of items can be brought and disposed of or recycled. This facility is operated by or owned by waste management under a partnership with Monroe County. Next is the Mill Seat Landfill, which is a non-hazardous solid waste landfill permitted to accept over or 760,000 tons of municipal solid waste every year. Uh, it also has a renewable energy recovery facility that has eight engines that takes the uh, gas generated from the decomposition of the garbage and generates electricity. And this facility can power approximately 6,000 homes. The Mill Seat Landfill is operated by Waste Management under a long-term lease agreement. Uh, they manage uh, all operations of the facility. As I mentioned, our facilities are interconnected as the anything from the transfer station that's brought to the transfer station is then shipped to the Mill Seat Landfill for disposal. The next is uh, we have two yard waste composting facilities where we manage uh, 20,000 cubic yards of leaves annually. The city of Rochester delivers all their curbside leaves that they collect during the fall to us. And then we put them in windrows and turn them periodically throughout the uh, winter, spring and summer. And then we screen for finished compost and have a give back program to the public. So that's generally our recycling, the system, our solid waste enterprise system. Um, but the history of recycling goes back, you know, to the early uh, 90s, the late 80s. And this is across New York State in general and really could be considered across the country. Uh, here in New York State, in 1988, the Solid Waste Management Act was put in place requiring local municipalities to put a local law in place for recycling, mandatory recycling. Monroe County at that time put a local law in place that required uh, residential recycling and uh, we constructed the Monroe County Recycling Center. So initially in 1992, materials like cans, newspaper, boxes, magazines, glass bottles were accepted at that time. And then as time went on, uh, additional materials were added to the system, such as junk mail, cartons, aerosol cans, gar uh, cardboard boxes were, can also continue to be accepted. So as you can see, as the, the years went on, more materials were accepted and uh, they were separated by your containers and your paper products. 
or your fiber. As you can see, the green and blue boxes at the bottom, so they were separated. 2013, we went to a mixed recycling program where all materials were uh, able to be combined in your recycling box or toter. Waste management uh, won the contract at that time and they retrofitted our facility into a single stream facility or a mixed recycling facility. So instead of at the curb being separated, uh, separation and sorting occurs at the facility, solely at the facility. But when that happened, there was a lot of confusion, unfortunately, on what was acceptable, what wasn't acceptable. Um, at that same time, there were a lot of new packaging products that came out. Uh, if you think about going to the supermarket and you walk down the, the, the aisle and you see pouches and all these different types of plastic uh, bottles and cans and, and, you know, all sorts of products and packaging. Um, so people were confused at that same time of what am I supposed to be putting in my bin? And it was clear, you know, here's some examples of different types of packaging that you would see. And unfortunately, not all plastic is recyclable in a uh, material recovery facility where things are being sorted out. Uh, so I show this as an example because when it came to plastics, we were telling people um, back in the early, in 2011, we told people, start putting um, all plastics one through sevens in your bin. Well, unfortunately, that plastic number, or the, the code on the bottom, that number uh, in the Mobius loop, only tells you what the resin type of plastic it is. So unfortunately, resins that were flexible, like a plastic bag, had a number two on it, or maybe um, rubber bands, you know, or um, other flexible packaging um, carpet is uh, a type of pla made out of plastic. These, t these materials are not recyclable in a typical curbside program. And so um, a lot of other examples um, is a number six, which is uh, typically expanded polystyrene or um, styrofoam. Um, they're labeled with a number six and that is not acceptable in a curbside program. So a lot of confusion um, centered around what is acceptable and what is not. Um, other examples like a hanger or a plastic lid for a cup, uh, utensils, CD cases, those things are not typically recyclable in a, in a curbside program. So public also is confused because uh, manufacturers, uh, the industry, packaging industry, uh, started the producers started to um, you know say things were recyclable on their products um, and that wasn't necessarily true so a really good example is K cups and that uh, you know they indicate that they might there is a recycling symbol even on the box that says that they're recyclable cups unfortunately in a in a mixed recycling material recovery facility they're just too small and they can't be uh, captured uh, appropriately to be sorted into the necessary products. So they are not recyclable on the system. Same with pouches. Any flexible packaging cannot be brought to a recycling center. So the public often is confused and, you know, I, I just, I like to, to state that because it's important um, to understand why we need to make sure our recycling system is sustainable and that people can do the right thing in their backyard um, to make sure that the right materials are going to the recycling center so they can actually be recycled into new products. Recycling only works if there is a market for those materials to be bought uh, and then remade into something new. So this is just a quick chart that I wanted to show about uh, people's confusion and uh, you know, People are always asking us how much food contamination is too much. Um, what is my program accept? Um, you know, what do the, the numbers even mean? So again, those numbers mean that uh, just the type of plastic resin that the product is made out of. 
So what does this mean for recycling in Monroe County and how do we need to uh, make sure that it's a sustainable program that is successful um, and profitable and materials that come to our facility are actually recycled. And this goes for all over the country, um, not just Monroe County, not just New York State. We need to get back to the basics of good recycling and clarify the types of recyclables that are accepted in your program. Every community needs to communicate with their residents about how the material is collected, what type of facility it goes to, what's acceptable. Um, there's a lot of good information out there. Um, if it's not from your local community, places like Recycle Across America, Recycling Partnership, Keep America Beautiful, all have, and even the EPA, as, as well as uh, Solid Waste Association of North America, have great uh, materials available to the public to help you know what to do. Um, and lastly, you know, the choosing reduce and reuse before recycle is really most imperative. We want people to, to limit the amount of materials that they're purchasing at the store or purchase things that they know are in recyclable materials. Don't purchase things in styrofoam or understand that if you're going to purchase something in a pouch, such as laundry detergent or maybe granola, that that product isn't going to be, or that packaging isn't going to be recyclable. However, uh, it, it does reduce, it did during the manufacturing of that product, um, the material uh, utilized to make that packaging was less than say a rigid uh, hard plastic uh, jug or container. Um, so it, it depends on if it's in the, on the front end of manufacturing or on the back end. But also then reuse, you know, make sure you utilize things over and over again. I'm not going to show the video today, given the time uh, limits that we have, but we do have a, re a recycling center video you can find at this uh, website address. You just go to MonroeCounty.gov backslash recycling and there's a link for our Monroe County Recycling Center video. And it shows our facility and um, the process from the curb through the entire system um, all the way until materials are bailed and then uh, ready for resale. So I urge you to take a look at that video. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of things out there on the, in, in the um, in communities, uh, municipalities uh, to get education out there. So I just wanted to focus on a couple that we've put together here in Monroe County that everybody are welcome to uh, take a look, utilize in their your um, at your convenience, um, or maybe use as a as a tool um, for your own community. A couple things that I want to point out is our Recyclopedia. Uh, you can find that on our website as well, and it's a 38 page document that goes through multitude of different materials and explains if they're recyclable. Maybe they're recyclable, but just not at the curb. Maybe you have to bring them back to a certain store or a facility like our eco park. Um, and it, it goes through each of those items. It's really informative and people have really liked that. We have a frequently asked questions on page. We have a Facebook page. And then I'm gonna mention, um, not the last thing that we've done, but uh, is we put together a sign suite of uh, these the signs that can be downloaded for free on from our website. And what we found is that when you go to a trash, public goes up to a trash and recycling bin, they're not really sure what goes in that bin. And they're not labeled for the most part, but it would be so much easier if they were. And they gave you images or at least some words to let you know what should and shouldn't go in the bin. So we generated uh, four different suites, um, specific for schools, offices, multifamily, as well as um, public spaces and they can be downloaded uh, for free, as I mentioned. We also urge everyone to put their bins together, twin the bin, recycling bin should be with your trash bin. Uh, so again, these are downloadable and people have really um, accepted them and utilized them, not just within Monroe County, but across the United States, uh, we've had people download them. So I welcome people to, to check them out 
and try to use them in their location. The multifamily uh, posters have the most materials on them, um, being that you, you know, we expect people in their homes can clean the materials more or have other st stuff available. Um, and so people, single family homes have also utilized them and printed them and put them in their garage and by the bin. So I wanted to get into some hot topics and these are mostly specific to New York State. However, uh, they are really ranging across the country right now. Um, Plastic bag ban that I'm sure many people know went into effect on March 1st, 1st 2020. Uh, it's in New York State, uh, anyone that collects sales tax, retailers, grocery stores, small businesses uh, will not be able to provide plastic bags. I understand at the time of this presentation that uh, New York State was scaling back slightly on some of these requirements, but this ban is still in place um, and it uh, requires stores to provide paper bags um, or uh, reusable bags for purchase. But things that aren't, are still going to be allowed to be in plastic bags include uh, things for meat, fish, poultry, your bulk items, sliced and prepared food, newspaper bags, prescription drugs, as well as uh, takeout bags. So if you go to a takeout restaurant, they will still be able to provide plastic bags. Food donation and food scrap recycling is really important um, because uh, food waste is quite a large percentage of material that ends up in the landfill uh, that can have a different use, whether it is through donation uh, or through um, composting or going to an anaerobic digester. Currently here in Monroe County, we do not have a food waste uh, collection program. I anticipate that that will probably change in the near future. Um, however, there are private companies and universities that are uh, collecting food scraps and bringing them to a recycling facility where they manage food scraps. There is legislation on the books that if a facility uh, generates more than two tons per week of food scraps, they will be required to send uh, by law uh, that material to a recycling facility, as long as it's within a certain uh, distance of the facility. But there's a few things, people that are exempt, such as residents, residents, hospitals, nursing homes, and schools will not need to do that. Food prevention is really important when it comes to food waste. And uh, RIT's um, affiliate Pollution Prevention Institute has a lot of really great resources that you can find online uh, to share um, with, with folks about how you can reduce your food waste at home, whether it's how you purchase your material, your food, and you're purchasing less, or how you utilize more of it, or how you can keep uh, materials um, in the fridge longer, or, you know, you have a longer shelf life of materials. So I just wanted to share this because I think it's really important for us all to do our part. And really a lot of this stuff starts at home um, and what we can do at home. Next is the New York State Drug Take Back Program. So pharmaceuticals has always been a challenge in that we want to keep them out of the waterways. It used to be people would flush them and that was the, the message. Fortunately, that is the worst thing you can do because they end up in our wastewater treatment facilities and we cannot treat that um, all of the pharmaceuticals in that fashion. So we have take back programs. Um, typically, police departments can accept a lot of the materials. Our eco park is a facility that collects them. But New York State is looking to uh, implement uh, collections at places like pharmacies um, and other places that, that distribute pharmaceuticals will also be able to take back uh, used, uh, unused or re uh, expired drugs. And so stay tuned to this because it's a really important program um, that will hopefully make it easier for residents to get back, safely get rid of their uh, pharmaceutical. Batteries. So this can change uh, from one area to the next across the state or even the country. Uh, 
But here in Monroe County, because we have landfill uh, disposal, any common single use alkaline batteries, AA, AAA, um, CED, those type of batteries can be placed in the trash. They are not accepted for recycling. Now other places that have disposal uh, where waste to energy is utilized, batteries are not accepted in that fashion. So you would wanna check your, your local program. Uh, with that said, uh, there is a law on the books uh, in New York State where rechargeable batteries are uh, not allowed to be placed in your recycling bin or in the trash, primarily in the trash. Um, and there are programs where manufacturers are required to collect these batteries um, back free of charge. So the Eco Park that I mentioned earlier is a facility that can take them, but also some other retailers are required to take back batteries as well. Uh, this is an extended producer responsibility uh, platform legislation where the manufacturer that makes these types of batteries is re responsible for uh, collecting them and disposing of them or recycling of them properly. I urge you to check with your local municipality on what is acceptable in your uh, area. But it's really important to understand that we don't want them in the, the trash. Uh, they can create fires and often every year we hear about fires uh, happening because batteries, um, specifically rechargeable batteries, uh, lithium, cadmium, that type of thing, uh, are put in the trash and they generate a spark and then you have a fire. So we want to make sure batteries are disposed of properly. Next item is textiles. Uh, many people question whether textiles, um, what type of textiles you should put in, uh, be able to donate to different various um, uh, entities. And the important thing to know is that there's a lot of different outlets out there. So really most places that accept textiles will take things that are torn, worn, stained. Um, they just need to be clean, dry, and odorless. Even if you have one shoe, for instance, um, that can be donated because there's other outlets. If you go to our website, you'll see a multitude of different places you can bring things. Um, various places have specific items that they do or do not take. Building materials is a great example that they're, you know, rehouse architectural, green ovation, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, they'll take a lot of those building materials that maybe um, other folks would have a use for. So as I mentioned, there's a, a lot of different uh, outlets for secondhand clothing. And I think this uh, chart is important to, to see in that it's not all just donated and then resold for um, the same use. So your t-shirt um, may not be resold as a t-shirt. 80% um, of it then goes off to charities where they're salvaged, um, either reused, reused and repurposed, um, exported for secondhand clothing, 30% is recycled and converted. Uh, there's a big market for wiping rags uh, that uh, for industrial and residential uses. And then 20% of it is recycled into fiber, maybe carpet padding or insulation uh, or things for the automotive industry. And only 5% actually ends up as waste. And my last hot topic is safety. I just really want people to understand that uh, solid waste and recycling jobs are one of the, um, in the top 10 most dangerous jobs in uh, the United States and Canada. Um, alone in 2018, 59 solid waste workers died. Um, and primarily it's from the collection uh, routes. Um, people do not slow down when they see a garbage truck as they would for an ambulance or a police officer. Uh, so I just urge people to understand that uh, garbage workers, uh, trash uh, and recycling uh, workers are important and they provide an essential service as we're all finding out right now. Um, and it's important to slow down to get around when you see one. So I'm gonna quickly, we have about six minutes left in my presentation. I want to do um, some myth busters just to um, give you some more details on, on some fun things. So are plastic utensils and straws recyclable? 
As I mentioned, no, they are not recyclable. Uh, typically, they are just too small to get through our uh, system to, through a recycling uh, material recovery facility. Um, and also, they're often very low grade plastic. The materials need to be uh, certain types of plastics that can be made into new plastics. Plastic film is another item. Plastic bags or film already, um, so I won't spend too much time on this, but they are not recyclable curbside. You can bring them back to a uh, your retailer or uh, grocery store. And, and I didn't mention this before, but even though with a plastic bag ban coming into effect, there still will be a lot of flexible packaging like newspaper bags, bread bags, Ziploc bags um, that will need to be recycled and not placed in your recycling bin. Again, they cause a lot of uh, machinery uh, downtime tangled around the equipment and also bring it to our eat. So the recycling areas are called Mobius Loop. Um, it means it's recyclable. And that's only in some cases. The plastic resin identification code, one through seven, only identifies the type of plastic it was made of, as I mentioned before. Um, a lot of types of plastics can't be made into new products at this time, and therefore they're, they may not. But there's a lot of different plastic containers that are accepted curbside, and here's a, a variable um, showing of them. Bottles, jugs, jars, and tubs are all acceptable. Are chip bags, nutritional bars, or candy wrappers recyclable? No, they're not. And the reason being is that there's really no end market for this type of material. It's typically a hybrid that uh, is not recyclable, so that should be placed in your trash. What about cartons? In Monroe County, cartons are recyclable. I urge you to check your local uh, recycling program to determine if they are or not. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, pouches are not in pizza boxes. Pizza uh, boxes can be recycled um, as long as they're clean. We don't want any food left over in the pizza box. Uh, I often tell people that if you see the grease come through the bottom of the pizza box, that's too dirty. It's too contaminated. Um, but you can rip the top of the pizza box off, recycle that piece, and then place the dirty piece um, that has the grease and whatnot on it in the garbage. Single serve cups, uh, can they be recycled? No, unfortunately they cannot. They typically have a plastic or wax coating uh, on the inside to contain the liquid material, um, and that does not break down during the repulping process. Also, napkins, paper towels, and tissues, can they be recycled? No, unfortunately they cannot. They're usually soiled, but also they've, they've already um, been through the process of uh, being recycled. They're typically already made out of recycled products, um, paper, fiber, that type of thing. Um, but the cardboard tube inside foam cups and containers, can they be recycled? Uh, no, they cannot be recycled. Um, polystyrene foam, plastic to-go cups are not acceptable curbside. In New York State, it was just passed that uh, food service type styrofoam will not uh, will now be banned. So that would be your cups and your takeout containers. So we'll likely see changes being made there. Um, and the eco part, we do accept um, some types of styrofoam, but I urge anybody that wants to do that to Can aerosol cans be recycled? Uh, yes, they can. Again, double check and make sure that they are acceptable in your curbside program. Um, as long as they're empty, we don't want anything with pesticides that in them um, or maybe even spray paint. Um, that may need to go back to a household hazardous waste uh, facility, but most importantly, they need I'm getting to the end here, so this is a fun one. True or false, every week waste management collects 100 bowling balls in its recycling facility. That, unfortunately, is true. So people seem to think that recycling or balls are bowling balls are recyclable. Um, every day, 14 people put them in a recycle bin, but no, they are not recyclable and should not be recycled. So I want to thank you all for listening uh, to the 
my presentation. If you have any questions at any time, you're welcome to uh, contact me via email or my, my phone number. Also, please check out our websites for additional information. Um, and uh, I hope that you've learned a little something today that you can use in your backyard to continue to make recycling a sustainable uh, mission.